And I already answered it, but I do want to go over it with you, Gray. I want to see, I want to get your thoughts on this. Right over here, it says, everything Deadpool and Wolverine did, She-Hulk did better. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen this one. But okay, that's funny. <laughs> okay. What are your thoughts on this, man? How do you feel about this? Yeah, that, that is maximum copium. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to have been drinking while writing this article. <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go ahead and read it up. Right over here, Deadpool and Wolverine has been a box office smash hit, grossing two hundred and eleven million in its opening weekend, which made it the sixth highest grossing opening weekend of all time and the largest foreign rated R movie. Many have claimed it was a big return to form for Marvel Cinematic Universe after the box office disappointment of the Marvels and the underperformance of Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania and the disastrous reviews of Secret Invasion. Indeed, the idea the MCU was in trouble was a bit blown out of proportion given that all three of their 2022 films were in the top 10 highest grossing movies of that year, but Deadpool and Wolverine seems to have won over fans. So, which is true, right? 2022, what 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 movie came out for 2022 for um, Marvel? Marvel. Was it um, maybe Multiverse of Madness and probably No Way Home? And probably another one, right? I'm assuming. I don't remember. I know Guardians was yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. I Marvels was also last year, and Quantumania early last year. So I don't. Yeah. I can't remember 2022 anymore. But I, I, I recall it's not, not good, not great, full of crappy Marvel stuff, post Endgame. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's see why this person's so mad and wrote this article. Deadpool and Wolverine is tre uh, treading a lot of familiar ground and a large portion of that praise that fans have given it seems to be ignoring that the MCU already did something similar in tone and format and did it better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is, of course, sure. She-Hulk Attorney at Law. She-Hulk Attorney at Law ran for nine episodes in 2022 and despite getting review bombed, uh, garnered praise from critics and high-profile fans. Uh, she Hulk, both the character and the series, was criticized for a lot of the same things Wolverine, uh, sorry, Deadpool and Wolverine is doing and getting a lot of praise. Is it as simple? Is it as simple as a Deadpool Wolverine doing it better, or is there something else at work here? Gray, what do you think, man? What do you think? If it if it's so good, if it's that fantastic, don't you think we should have gotten a season two by now? <laughs> and maybe calling out the CEO in public wasn't such a good idea for the lead actress. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Yeah. So the thing is, um, yeah, it, no, no season two has been announced. Like if it was that good, season two would have been announced already. No one's talking about it anymore. And the thing is, you have incompetent writers and incompetent directors and the entire time they're basically talking shit about the fan base, telling them that they're awful, making fun of uh, pe people who likes the original source material. And also at the same time, diminishing the value that is incredible Hulk, right? It's sort of like making him a little bitch. And he said, I can control my feelings better than you. So I, I don't know what this person is on about, but yeah, let's continue. She Hulk, is judged more harshly than Deadpool. On the surface, She-Hulk and Deadpool seems worlds apart, but the two characters have a lot in common. The biggest thing is that they, ha uh, they have in common and both characters break the fourth wall, speaking to the audience and seemingly being aware they are fictional characters. While She-Hulk debuted in 1979, the first, the first time she broke the fourth wall and addressed the reader was a decade later in 1989. This was two years before Deadpool even debuted in Marvel Comics, yet Deadpool has become more known as the fourth wall breaking character. And I mentioned this yesterday. So Gray, do you know uh who Deadpool is actually based off of? In terms of like mm -hmm. like his origin, like who is he based off of in terms of like other superheroes? You know like how like um Dark Side came first and then Thanos is actually drawn by the same guy who drew that, that's why Thanos and Darkseid sort of Ooh, really? okay. have, have, have oh. the same build. Um, Aquaman oh. and um, Aquaman for uh, DC and then uh, Namor the Submariner for Marvel. And um, mm, Namor okay. the Submariner was one of the first, uh, basically the first um, superhero, one of the first early, early superheroes that came out for Marvel. And then couple, several years later, 
Aquaman came out and then Aquaman became the popular. Do you know who is Deadpool supposed to be? Uh, I, in face value, I would say Wolverine because they both can heal. But I so I, no, I have I have no idea. Did you do you watch? Someone mentioned in the chat right over there. Do you watch Teen Titans? Have yeah. You watched Teen? It's based off of Deathstroke. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. You see sense. it now, right but, now. But, so what, what what is what is um Deadpool's real name? Like his non alter ego. Ah uh, ah okay okay yeah w- Wade Wilson and then Deathstroke the is Slade Wilson. Slade Wilson. Okay okay okay. <laughs> yeah yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the only thing uh Deathstroke doesn't have is the healing properties, right? He's, he's, he does, but is nowhere near close near enough. As effective as Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, it's the I I don't think Deathstroke can like regrow a limb. Uh, like I I, I at least yeah. uh, from what I hear. I mean, but, yeah, yeah I, I I just yeah. I played I just played Origins recently, and yeah, he's one of the villains he had to fight in Arkham Origins, so he didn't he didn't heal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yo, Deathrage, thank you so much for the two dollars super chat. Thank you, thank you. Just got here. I love your slant eyed yeah. reviews. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the two dollars super chat. Thank you. Now let's go and continue right over here. Um, the reason why I, I think that Deadpool, Deadpool has no when he, the inception of Deadpool has he has always been known to be a troll, like non serious comedic character, right? In the comic books, he has like three voices in his head, like three different voices in his head, right? And he's always talking to himself, and it's known that like he is that he he's so crazy that he's able to break the fourth wall so much that he kills the writers. For Deadpool, the comics. Oh, That's, okay. Yeah, he's that like he's that meta, right? And the thing is, that She-Hulk has never been like a joke or like a, a like like a troll character at all, right? She does break the fourth wall eventually, but it's not the same. Comparing it, comparing it, it's sort of like you're comparing oranges to apples, right? Deadpool is so much more beyond what She-Hulk will ever be. But I think they're, they're just talking in, in in basically just about the MCU, right? So let's continue. Even uh, This even pertains to their powers in the films. Both She-Hulk and Deadpool don't gain the ability to break the fourth wall until after they get their superpowers. The MCU uses She-Hulk's fourth wall breaking ability as an expression of her inner monologue. And aside from one quick glance from the Hulk, nobody in the universe knows she is doing this. Meanwhile... Deadpool breaks the wall to communicate with the audience as both an inner monologue and a way to tell jokes. Yet the other characters are semi-aware of it. Yeah, it's sort of like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you talking about, right? And I think that's what makes it funny is because like, if the other characters don't really know, it's like, oh, it's sort of like, the, the, Gray, I'm pretty sure. Did you ever watch Saved by the Bell? No. Okay. So it is a um, late 80s, early 90s, like a high school sitcom kind of thing, right? And Zach Morris, which is the main character, he can break the fourth wall. Whenever something gets too crazy, he'll be like, time out. And everyone sort of just freezes. And he goes up to the camera and starts talking to the camera. So uh, the, it's, it's, the, the, the way that they're doing it right over here is just um, like it's – they're doing it where like the other characters don't – no, like it just they still sort of pause and they don't work. But what makes Deadpool funny is just sort of like they know what they, they see he, him doing. What the fuck are you talking about, Marvel Universe? What what, what the fuck? Are, what what is that, right? But um, but yeah, if you haven't watched Say Say by the Bell, it's it's pretty dated now. But like that's something that I grew up watching. But uh, it, it is pretty good. The She Hulk's ability to break the fourth wall, particularly in the season finale where she changes the ending, was said to break the MCU and not make sense. It divided fans, yet nobody seems to have an issue with Deadpool breaking the fourth wall within the MCU. Nobody even took umbrage with Deadpool breaking the fourth wall in the Fox X-Men universe, and instead the film character were praised for breaking the reality in those films. Now, uh, we didn't watch She-Hulk, but what are your thoughts on what this guy is writing so far? Yeah, maybe it's because, yeah, I know that both characters broke the fourth wall, but, but Deadpool did it and they wrote it in a way that made sense and is actually funny whereas here in She-Hulk is you're doing it to send like a political message to send it like to try to push the ESG DEI ideology which did not 
which did not stick the landing. And obviously, it did not resonate with a lot of people, except for those who want to push the same thing. So, yeah, that, that's the reason why. It's not because... it. Yeah, She-Hulk did it first, but first doesn't mean it's good. And Deadpool did it a lot better. And that's what's important. That's what's more memorable. That's what resonates with people more than doing it for sometimes the first mover isn't necessarily what will give you the advantage if that's what you're saying it's more of mm-hmm. who does it better and that that's what happened with Deadpool absolutely man all right let's continue right over here let's see both Deadpool and She-Hulk are also characters who are open about their sexuality the first film Sorry, the first Deadpool established that he's open and free with his sexuality, constantly flirting with Wolverine and various other male characters. Now, the thing is, do you ever, like, do random gay shit with your friends? Not when I say, okay, this is gonna sound, this make me sound, this make me sound really (laughs) fucking gay. All right. When I say gay shit, I'm talking about, like, you say gay stuff to your friends just so you can make them mad or you can make a joke about it yeah like you're definitely. not serious about it right yeah it's like that back uh before woke th- woke became a thing back in high school oh you're gay it, that means you're like you're you're stupid or you're you did something that you're being made fun of now it's mm-hmm. like oh you say something like that oh you're gonna get canceled to oblivion whatever <laughs> whatever social media you are on yeah. so it, it it was meant as a light-hearted uh way of you know uh making fun of people back in the day yeah definitely yeah, like for for me, like me and my friends, like back in the day, like we would call each other gay. Whenever, whenever, oh, that shit, oh, that shit is gay, man. Whenever mm-hmm. we say that, it's more for like, oh, that's lame. And then yep. I guess like you can't say that anymore. And then people are like, oh, that's actually in, that's very offensive. You shouldn't say that. What if you meant lame? Why don't you just say lame? Is because we're trying to look for the worst way possible to say lame, mm-hmm. right? Instead of saying, oh, that's dumb, that's stupid. We say, oh, that shit's retarded because that's the worst version of it. Right. Mm-hmm. And as guys, we always say that thing all the time. Right. What's the worst thing of of like. Uh, of basically saying something without, you know, saying that, you know, that the gamer word, the Melanie Mac word. Right. So it's like when, whenever like me and my friends would say something like, oh, man, it's like, oh, man, I'm going to oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick my cannon up right up your ass and I'm going to blow a load right into you. No homo. We'll, we'll say stuff like that just to mess with each other. And it does not mean anything. But according to these, these these weird people online, and especially these DEI ESG woke liberals, especially this guy who's writing this, they think that like gay fake flirting is actually flirting. Whenever he goes like this with uh with uh, what's it called again, a uh, cable. Oh, he's actually he's in love with cable. He's super <laughs> gay with cable. Oh yeah, like. Like w- whenever he looks at Wolverine's abs in uh, the third movie, he's actually wanting to lick his abs. He's like, damn, I want to lick you. Like, oh, he's actually gay with him. No, he's not. Yes, in the comics, he's pansexual, meaning that he's, he'll have sex with anything, right? He'll have, he'll have sex with like a, like a stu- blow up stuffed animal if you wanted to, right? But in the MCU proper, he's a straight guy that does a lot of gay jokes. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't like like the fact that they, he makes a lot of gay jokes, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I'm touching myself tonight. Like, what, like well, whenever you kill someone or something like that, right? But uh, all right, let's continue. Uh, let's see, uh, right over here. See, She-Hulk Attorney at Law addresses the character's alter ego, Jennifer Walters, who struggles with dating. She has three partners in the series, leading to a vocal minority to slut shame her. In a way, the series got ahead of it by making those people essentially the villains of the series. Yet Deadpool is warmly embraced as being wacky, silly hero. It does not feel like Deadpool is given... Okay, it does feel like Deadpool is given more of a pass than She-Hulk. Yes, absolutely, because Deadpool is a joke character. Yeah. And it's better written. I, I, I know it's like he makes the argument about She Hulk, you know, uh, sleeping with a lot of guys. I, uh, according to the review, like as and G and G and FNT, it was not written well. Like as even went far as far as to say that She Hulk kind of raped them. So it's because of the terrible writing as well. That's why she yeah. did not get a pass. Yeah. So yeah. Yo, Dante Rage with another five dollar super chat. Thank you, thank you, man. Deadpool only had three voices in his head because he had another mutant fuse 
in his mind. The three, the third voice was the straight man to retard, uh, to retardation. Yeah, I like I remember there's like different colors, right? In the actual like Deadpool comics, there's like each of the the, the dialogue boxes. Whenever it's yellow, it's like a different a, a different version of Deadpool. Whenever it's like a different color, so that's how you can tell. And um, it's actually pretty cool. And the thing is, I love that the fact that. Deadpool and Wolverine is making so much money because it, they don't give a fuck, right? Like I said yep. before, they are mad that this movie is making so much money because it's led by two straight white male. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, she hulks jokes about the MCU felt more relevant while Deadpool's felt pandering. Uh, she hulk attorney at law and Deadpool Wolverine have plenty of jokes to make about the Marvel MC oh, sorry, the MCU. It is odd how people seem shocked that Disney and Marvel let Deadpool make such pointed jokes about them when just two years prior, she hulk used the same daring approach just without needing to use swear words or easy sex jokes to push the boundaries of the Disney machine. Yet, as it stands, both use their hero's fourth wall breaking abilities to make jokes and comments on the state of the MCU. She-Hulk attorney at law sees Jennifer Walters fed up with the plot lines on her show, break the fourth wall, and move into the viewer's reality and confronts both the writers of the series, also known as Kevin, an AI that is a stand-in for the Marvel's uh, Studios president, Kevin Feige. Finale is filled with many great jokes about the larger MCU of Kevin saying their algorithms and makes near perfect products, uh, commenting on how some viewers like other films better and uh, others while poking fun at the criticism that MCU films all feel the same, which is true, right? Most of the MCU ever since there are select few that are different, right? You have um, Multiverse of Madness, whether or not you like it or not, it became a Scarlet Witch movie, which is something that people, you know, either liked or didn't like. And same thing with uh, No Way Home. But most of the MCU stuff is like there is um, the introduction, you know, there's three acts to a film. The introduction, and then the, the you know, the sort of like what happens and the plot and then the struggles in the second act. And then third act is like big battle, big war shit, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. Um, she hoax out, uh, out a bunch of the MCU uh, story conventions, like how they all uh, all end in the same way with a big third act. Not only does She-Hulk attorney at law comment on this, it breaks the mold by having its finale truly be a lawyer giving a closing argument. She-Hulk even pokes fun at the contrived blood magic plot line that Marvel Studios would unironically do in Secret Invasion uh, the following year. She-Hulk attorney at law's jokes are not only commonly held critiques of the MCU, but doing something different. Um, if she was actually, if her, you know, argument being a true lawyer giving a closing argument, it it sort of shows that you're sort of belittling your fans. Like she, because at the end of it, she at at, at the end of the the last you know episode, she basically is talking at the fans, right? She goes into the writers' room talking to Jessica yeah. Yao, and all. Like the thing is, it if it was written competently by good writers. And directed by good people instead of people who are just trying to push a uh, push a message, I think people would react to it differently. Now, and I talk about this a lot. Has there ever been an incident of a good movie where, like, we're using Deadpool three as an example? Has Rob Liefeld, Ryan Reynolds, or Hugh Jackman ever talk shit about the fans? Nah, not that I remember. That's the thing. Yeah. You don't, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what's that's what they do differently, right? Because like they were talking in She Hulk, as far as I know, they were attacking the fans directly and attacking the MCU formula that got that ironically was the reason why this the show existed to begin with. And then they spit on that and then they cast that aside. And lo and behold, you don't get a season two. I don't think you're getting a season two. I could be wrong, but the the way I see it, it's the it's the end of She Hulk, at least this iteration. Yep. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little quick. I did a quick search right over here, and all I did was She Hulk claps back at fans. First one right over here from TV Insider. She Hulk star uh, Jamila Jamil claps back at hostile viewers. Hulk fans celebrate the return of Avenger iconic. I uh, don't know. Okay, whatever. She Hulk writer claps back at Disney CEOs for revealing their stuff, and then basically, and you have T Tatiana, uh, basically the main character, talking 
about the fans. They don't know what they're talking about. Jessica Gao's like, oh, it's, it, it's meant to, you know, it's meant to poke fun of you guys. And I believe that they even made like a a mask that's in the show that sort of pokes fun of uh, at um at Doomcock, right? So not once that. have I heard um Ryan Reynolds, even Blake Lively, Rob Liefeld, or any of these people who are making good movies talk shit about their fans. And that's a good way to basically cut your fan base in half because people people who will voluntarily go watch garbage bullshit is because it's like haha i'll i'll do my you know take that because they want the movies to do well and then when they don't do well like um elizabeth elizabeth banks is uh what's it called again um charlie's angels they just automatically gonna blame the fans again yep right this movie is not made for you all right cool i won't watch your movie all right cool you didn't have to say that Yep. Right? Let's see. Uh, it's a good way to shoot your, yourself in the foot. Deadpool mm-hmm. Wolverine, on the other hand, has the issue of Deadpool calling out the MCU conventions, but partaking in it. The welcome to the MCU you are entering at a bit of a low point sounds like a joke commenting on the recent state of the MCU, but also feels like a cheap shot because it never precisely says what that means or what the entries uh, it call uh, is calling out. Now, Gray. What do you what what was your thought was um when uh what's it called again? Deadpool set this in the movie. Welcome to the MCU. You're coming, but you're coming on in uh you're entering in at a, a bit of a low point. <laughs> yeah, it's actually uh it's true in a sense. Maybe it's like the intention was to call out like Marvel management and the higher ups at Disney to, you know step it up. It's time to um throw away or cast aside you know, feminism, should I say feminism in MCU? It's like, because Marvel's essentially a a male brand. There are females watching it for sure, but it's predominantly a male brand. And you tried to push some, you tried to change it to a, to a girl brand for some reason. And it did not work out. So it's time to wake up and set things back on track. But I, I don't know. Uh, now that I think about it, it's like, right, the news when Robert Downey was casted as uh, Doctor Doom. We, yeah. we were like, we were, we were kind of excited for it, but when the videos came out this week, this week people were saying that maybe this is just like a final, last ditch attempt to yeah. steer the ship. Yo, so we just, I, I so, sorry to interrupt you, but like, yeah. yo, we just got raided by Wicked Virtue Saucy Raid. Thank you, thank you for the raid. Thank you, thank you so much for the raid, Wicked. Thank you. Holy crap, man! Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Saucy Raid. Yeah, Wicked Raid. Yo, what's going on, boys? What's going on? How's it going? Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wicked. Thank you. Thank you so much for the rain. We, we really appreciate it. Hope you guys had a great stream. You guys had a great stream. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Dante Rage with the five gifted membership, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Holy crap. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, welcome, Raiders. Hope you guys are having a good Saturday. Thank you. Thank you again. We really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, sorry. Sorry, Greg. Go, go ahead with the whole uh, Dr. Doom and uh, RDJ thing. Yeah, it's just like uh, the feet. Um, I think Deadpool was just trying to, in a, in a way, in a indirect way, try to call out management. Hey, this is how you make a Marvel movie, like how you used to make it back when you made so much money, not when you're mm-hmm. losing it. And yeah, yeah that, I, I think it's a good. I think it's a good thing that, and he was allowed to do that, especially yeah. nowadays. See what pisses yeah. me off about the statement right over here. It says. It sounds like a joke commenting on the recent state of the MC, but it also feels like a cheap shot because it never precisely says what that means or what entries is calling out. Yeah, it's meant to be a cheap shot. And the thing is that, why does Ryan Reynolds need to say, oh, which movie? Imagine saying, welcome to the MCU. You're entering at a bit of a low point. Oh, because of the Marvels, because of Secret Invasion, because of, it's like you don't have to explain your joke. All right. Yep. If you explain your joke, it's not funny anymore. Yeah, like, it's not a good joke. Exactly. Oh my God, man. This writer is like toughing on that copium dick, man. Holy crap. Yep. See, it feels like it feels less like commenting on the genuine criticism and repeating a talking point. Doesn't that also make Wolverine part of the low point? Yes, it does. But it, it, the movie is coming, is coming in at a low point, but the movie is not the low point. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially based off of the money. The money it's been receiving, right? I believe last mm-hmm. time I checked, it has like five. Like, I checked yesterday, five hundred and twenty million dollars worldwide. 
Yeah. Is it is it still on track? Is it still beating Way of Water in terms of projections? I'm not sure. I I I, I have to double check. I do have the numbers. But I do have the numbers pulled up. But yeah, we'll talk about that. Yo, Marley, thank you so much for becoming a new a member. Thank you, thank you. Or, or thank did you, you just re, re, restart your membership? I'm not sure, but it says uh, become a YouTube member. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Marley. Uh, let's continue. Let's see. Uh, even Deadpool's comment on being tired of the multiverse and being played out clashes with the film ex uh, itself, which reveals in the multiverse aspect that allow for returning fan favorite characters. Now, I talked about this also. If Deadpool in the beginning of the movie says, I hate multiverse, multiverse is stupid. Then, yes, it would make sense that, yeah, he he's making a joke about that and then participating and allowing the multiverse to happen. But the multiverse a aspect happens, right? It happens at the third act, like the, yep. near the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. Right. And the thing is, that, yeah. like, it also. So with. With this in mind, what happened to Kang Dynasty? Yep. No, no updates on that, huh? <laughs> I, so I heard they canceled. It. I heard it's no, no longer a thing. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Like, oh man, yeah, they, they they didn't even want to replace Kang anymore. It's like, okay, we, we gotta remove Kang because, like, I think they they decided to do that because, like, if they just recasted Kang, they would just continue to make fun of it or. The Wokies would get angry if it's not a black guy anymore. So they just outright just remove Kang as a villain. That's what I. Yeah. That's how I think their philosophy was. Yeah, man. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue. See where She Hulk, turning at law, poked fun at the MCU formula and gave new type of ending. Deadpool and Wolverine comments on the MCU conventions and thinks that's enough of an excuse for it indulging in the same tropes. The thing is that there is a way for you to do multiverse theory right. There is a way for you to do cameos correctly and do it right where it actually respects the actual characters. Now, Gray, are you going to watch Multiverse of Madness? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. All right. Uh, then, then I was, uh, if, you, if you don't already know, and this is also for you and people in the chat, I'm going to spoil the cameos. If you guys, uh, you guys should know the cameos already, but I will spoil it anyways. So, uh, she basically, uh, what's it called again? They go into a different different universe, right? And then uh, they found out, uh, they find out that there is this Illuminati team. The Illuminati team basically are the people who sort of run their universe. And it consists of um, Baron Mordo, the black guy, the black bad guy from uh, Doctor Strange. You know, like, so he sort of becomes a bad guy at the end. Baron Mordo. Uh, Charles Xavier, he's in the actual yellow wheelchair played by... Um, Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, you have um, Big Titty Haley Atwell playing uh, Captain Carter from What If, where she's actually playing the Captain Carter with the Captain, uh, she has her own shield. What, what if Captain Carter got the Super Soldier Serum versus um, Steve Rogers, right? And then they have, um, is, it, uh, is it Monica Rambo? I forgot. The mom. Uh, she's basically the, the Captain Marvel in there, the, the black Captain Marvel. From the the mm. so basically that one and they have John Krasinski, Mister Fantastic. So everyone has been wanting John Krasinski, Mister Fantastic, to be Mister Fantastic for a long, long time. Even my friend drew a concept art of 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 him, and I believe John Krasinski shared it on his Instagram, which is a long time ago. So they bring all those characters in. Scarlet Witch comes into that universe and Scarlet, Scarlet Witch kills all those characters within minutes. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not paying homage, not paying any of the cameos respect, all of them just die. And it's a bad way to do cameos. And it's bad writing. It's because we finally get the correct wheelchair for Charles Xavier. We finally get... Miss, and we also get Black Bolt. The correct Black Bolt from um, Inhumans TV show where he's actually yeah, wearing the actual outfit. That's the Black Bolt I remember. The one in the human. <laughs> yeah. 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 And the thing is that it's so stupid is because um, you know Black Bolt's powers, right? You, you've seen the TV yeah. show? Yeah. He's, he keeps his mouth shut because it's just incredibly powerful when he opens his mouth. So according to the comic books, even just a, if he screams at the top of his lungs, he can destroy galaxies. Yeah. So he's insanely strong. People are saying that he can potentially even go one-to-one -one with Hulk.
because he all he can do can, can do is continue uh, yelling at him, and Hulk can get completely destroyed. I, 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 but I digress. Mister Fantastic, the smartest person in the MCU, so the smartest person ever in Marvel comic history, basically says, "You better watch out." My friend over here, Black Bolt, even just a whisper from his atomic voice can shatter universes. What the fuck do you think Scar- Scarlet Witch is going to do? He she sews his mouth up and then like so he can so he talks, he goes, "Hmm," and then his whole head explodes. Yeah. Imagine bringing a character finally in their correct outfit, finally looking really badass, and you, the smartest man alive, kills Black Bolt. It's like, whoops. Um, yeah, and then Fantastic, Mr. Fantastic gets turns into a spaghetti. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever, man. Yeah. But yeah, but the thing is that versus the Deadpool right over here, that's how you do cameos. That's how you yeah. bring homage to all the old characters or the characters that should have been, right? Like Gambit. Oh, yeah, man. I imagine right. that probably because of all those characters in multiverse, I imagine they'll retcon that one or they'll just bring one from another universe. Like what they're doing with Avengers. I imagine that's what they're going to do if they want to utilize those characters. Yeah. Yeah, man. It, 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 it's awful. It's freaking awful, man. All right. Let's see. Um, let's talk about it right over here. Uh, the dancing double standards. Now, this is where I'm like, <laughs> you guys are stupid. Uh, all right, here we go. The key difference on how audiences have reacted to She-Hulk and Deadpool, the particularly how one is given a bigger pass than the other, is in their dance scenes. In the She-Hulk Attorney at Law third episode, People versus Emil Blonsky, the episode's mid credit scene features she hulk dancing with megan the stallion with the two twerking to the singer's hit song body this clip became a lightning rod for a specific subset of the fandom saying how far the mcu had fallen for allowing this scene to exist and making a whole joke of the franchise now before we talk about deadpool's dance scenes what were your, were your thoughts when you first saw this dancing did you think that oh this was fun did you think that this was actually really cool they brought in uh you know a, a big singer and then you have um she hulk twerking did you like this it was one of our popular videos <laughs> that's about that's the only good <laughs> thing that came out of it <laughs> that's the only good thing that came out of it but yeah, yeah it's incredibly cringe it's really it's like it's it did not this was, you know, this was the, what I call it, the start. It, no, it's, it's the start of when things in Marvel started to take off in terms of DEI stuff. That's this one of the, like the major key points that indicates what what we were gonna get next up until this point. Yeah. Now, so here's the thing. Um, let's say you're comparing dances, right? Oh, one, one's a dance. One. First thing. It's a twerking is a sexual dance. Yeah. Okay. It's a sexual dance. Like, oh, but she's just having fun. She's just having fun. You know, she's, first of all, Bye Bye Bye, one of NSYNC's most popular songs, right after uh, it's it's gonna be May. It's, it's Bye 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 is one of the most popular songs. It is one of the first songs that was released prior to, in No Strings Attached album, right? This is basically the album that rivaled um backstreet boys millennium album which is their biggest album it is a huge song compared to megan the stallion's body which is basically a song about sex right and twerking is a sex move all right and, and i talked about this yesterday grinding great you know what grinding is a, that you know when people are grinding on each other yeah okay so it's basically like you're dancing really, really close with the girl's butt rubbing on your crotch, right? Basically, that's grinding. Or, or, or you know, if it looks like you're, you're dancing and you're scissoring each other. But the thing is, for this one, you remove the guy and it's basically it's a sexual dance, right? Even Miley Cyrus was twerking on, uh, you know, with, uh, what's it called again? Um, that, that, that other singer, I forgot his name already. But yeah, let's see. Let's, let's, let's see how this person compares it to NSYNC. This is in sharp contrast to Deadpool Wolverine's opening title credits, which sees Deadpool 
killing an entire group of TVA agents with the remains of Wolverine's corpse to the NSYNC song Bye Bye Bye. The opening credits also feature Deadpool doing an iconic dance moves from the hit music video. This scene was praised, and within days, the official NSYNC YouTube renamed the, uh, the song video as NSYNC Bye 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 Official <laughs> Video That's from actually Deadpool funny. and Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. So, um, great. Do you think that these two dances are comparable? Like, do you think that they're the same? No. Again, it's it boils down to the writing. It's like I it's I, I keep regurgitating myself in this portion of the, the live stream. It's because yeah, it's like in, in the twerking, it's like here, oh, we're here to vandalize Marvel and its brand. It's not it's not a boy brand anymore. It's for the new modern audience. Whereas in the Deadpool intro, it is actually it fits Deadpool's tone as a movie and Deadpool as a character. And the way they animated the effects with um the credits, it's pretty much on brand. Like everything is well thought out. It's like, does it fit with Deadpool as a character? Does it fit the story? Does it fit the tone of the movie? That's why it's so well received compared to the She-Hulk one, where you're just, you know, yeah, this is this is Marvels for females now for the DEI audience that BlackRock wants so badly. So yeah, that's why it failed. Yeah. Now. So I what I said was the reason why um, this worked out good is because it's not just a throwaway scene, mm -hmm. right? The, the twerking scene with Megan Thee Stallion is a post credit scene that has, it does not further the narrative. It does not show anything cool. All it shows that is she's twerking versus this is an, a whole opening title sequence with a title card. And with Deadpool doing cool shit and dancing at the same time, it's like you said, it's very, very in character, right? Now, Deadpool and Wolverine has the benefit that Bye 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 is now seen as a nostalgic song being 24 years old. Uh, while fans likely in 20, uh, sorry, 2000 would have reacted very poorly to the popular boy band in the superhero movie, as, some, uh, as time moves on, nostalgia makes people more willing to accept things they hated at the time of their releases. Uh, sorry, as a release, as noted by some Deadpool and Wolverine's big reveals, getting audience cheers instead of boos like the mid 2000s. Now, in my opinion, the reason why I think that it is cringe is because it's just done bad. Is like, and I say, is throw is a throwaway film. It's a throwaway scene. And I thought th this is what they should have done. Okay, imagine if She Hulk finally officially gets her powers, All right? She gets her powers. Maybe in episode two, the scene opens up where she's eating. She's eating uh, with with her friends at like this this um you know the Sunday brunch, right? A bunch of bad guys shows up, and then a bad guy basically like like accidentally knocks him like a boombox down, and it starts playing S <laughs> Spice Girls wannabe. <laughs> right? If you want to be my lover, you gotta get with my friends, and then she. She sort of smiles and then she starts beating up the bad guys while dancing to Spice Girls and then lip singing, like basically singing it and dancing and beating them up. And then while she beats one of them up, it shows the title card. Boom, She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. That will have more of an impact and it will have the same amount of praise that it will get from fans. Like, oh, that's really, really cool. You yeah. should have done that. Instead of doing mm -hmm. this, oh, this twerking dance. Like she she, she could have done something like that, but they didn't do it. It's because they're like, we want to have her twerking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. No, let's continue. If one is being genuinely honest, there is no difference on the surface between Deadpool Wolverine and She-Hulk dancing. Yes, there is. There absolutely is. <laughs> this, oh, this, this article is a lot longer than I thought it would be. It would be. <laughs> We're almost done. We're almost done, man. This, this is the last pair. Oh, okay. okay. That's the last part. Okay. I thought there was going to be more. <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh, shit. Yeah. Both are fun little scenes. No. Her scene was like no. five, 20 seconds long, maybe at most. All right. I'm actually going to... How long is the, the twerking scene? I want to I wanna actually see how long. She-Hulk uh, twerking. It's 40 seconds long. Versus Deadpool... Killing the TVA members and then that was really long. It was that like was long. two minutes. Yeah. 
man. It's not, it's not little, it's not little scenes that gives insight into the character's more comedic nature that fits into the characterization in the comics and the, in the films. There is no good reason that the stain for She-Hulk must be more depressing. She-Hulk attorney at law gets labeled cringeworthy, whereas Deadpool and Wolverine gets to be funny. The boys are allowed to make jokes, but women does the same and they are unfairly criticized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sounds like copium, man. Now, now here's the thing. Yeah. Um, it, this is a rhetorical question, but can women be funny? Take your I'm trying take to. I'm trying to recall <laughs> an instance in real life and in fiction. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, based, now, now here's, I think women could be funny, but in a different way. They have to be different. They, yeah, they can be I funny, but they, they can't be funny in the same way. It's sort of like Amy Shoot. Like, imagine if a okay, a guy comes out and talks about like his dick or something like that. People will find it funny, right? If it's done correctly. And then Amy Schumer comes out and say, My vagina, my vagina. And then she puts the mic up up against her her vag and thinking that it's funny. No, that shit is cringe as fuck, man. And that's why. Mm -hmm. These female writers in the writing room, like Jessica Gao, Tatiana, and J Jamil, like all, all of them are just like really bad. And I think that in order to make a strong female character, they have to be physically strong and finish exactly like the male counterparts. In order to make a funny female character, we have to make the exact same jokes. We have to make the exact same things, which is stupid, right? Um, now, here's the thing. The funniest female comedy I've seen, which is all that the main cast is all female, is probably Bridesmaids. Mm. Did you watch Bridesmaids? No, not yet. Okay, so Bridesmaids actually, uh, done, you know, it's pretty well done. Most of the girls that are on there were from SNL, so like they actually know how to do comedic stuff. They know how to they know how to act like in in, in a comedic way, and I think that was done really really nicely and it's different from male comedy and that's how it should be and the thing is like oh just they, they're doing the same dances it's like no it's it's shitty writers shitty directors basically thinking that they have this like their comedy should be regarded as the same thing on, on the same way I, I i don't know man i think that yeah. it's just cringe as a, who, who wrote this dick fink Richard Fink is a guy who, like, like I said yesterday, this guy is your classical leftist male feminist. All he wants is the girls to read this article saying, how, look how much, look how I praised She-Hulk. I said She-Hulk was really, really good. I said Deadpool is bad. Can I have sex with you now? <laughs> <laughs> that's basically the the epitome of a uh, richard fink right over here thanks for checking out this segment of the project egg Row podcast if you like what we do here please like share subscribe hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live we do go live every saturday at 8 p.m once again we are just getting started tons of more video to come thanks and we'll see you guys next time